Vibration and frequency is everything. It is literally everything. If you take an aspirin, it changes the way you vibrate. And so it blocks the nerves so that you can't feel pain. If you take deworming programs, you change your vibration and you change your vibration so dramatically that the worms and parasites either have to get out of you, this is no longer a good home, or they die in you. My name is Wayne Rowland. I'm just like you. I have heard that there's a cure for disease that's been suppressed. One man called me and he said, well, he said there's not one cancer that's been suppressed, there's been five. Which one do you want to know about? I said, whatever one works. He sent me to somebody that had an original Rife Ray unit, and I used it. Three months later, the cancer was gone. So was my arthritis. And I was so gung-ho on it that I decided that I had to get involved in building Rife machines and get it out there for people and really help them. So I started doing research into the Rife technologies, and I found another man who really knew quite a bit about Rife and had all the frequencies and everything and I went to see him and paid him a little bit of money and uh, he became a friend of mine, his name is John Sajeka and John Sajeka showed me that I wasn't using the Hertz rates to get rid of cancer at all and that upset me because I paid good money for this now, and, the, and why did the cancer leave? and I looked at the Hertz rates that I was using and lo and behold there were Hertz rates to get rid of worms and parasites. It turned out that the lead poisoning was giving a bed for parasites to breed in furiously and it was their waste that had given me cancer. I was absolutely in shock. And the more research I did and the further I got into this, the more I found out that pretty much all disease is caused by worms and parasites. Parasites or demons. And when you start to compare the two, you'll see there's a lot of similarities. Parasites don't just invade your body, they hijack your nervous system, control us very easily. By definition, both are known to control their hosts and manipulate behavior. I mean, look at these things. They can influence your thoughts, the types of foods you crave, encourage sexual desires, even your dreams. So it's very possible these parasites act as antennas or conduits for these demonic entities. Archons, jinn, demons, whatever you want to call them. But think about it. Why else is there fast food, alcohol, and junk on every street corner? And then you combine that with pesticides, fungicides, microplastics, heavy metals. Think about what kind of influences you could be under. These are the sources of addiction. This is why people can't break those bad habits or those vices. You ask yourself, why'd you do that? Why'd you eat that? Why do you keep doing those things you know are bad for you? Is it you or is it the parasite forcing that self-destructive behavior? Now, even the Bible says some demons can only be casted out through fasting. Anyone who's done a deep fast knows those shakes of abstaining from certain foods. You're like a drug addict being revealed your true addictions. But then it gets easier as you starve those demons out. So this is what no one tells you about a parasite cleanse. Killing the parasites is just the first step. You still have to flush them out of your system, otherwise you're left with a bunch of dead worms inside of you. Tell me what your theory is in terms of disease and how you recommend that disease is treated. I generalized because I saw so many diseases that I was working on to be due to a parasite and a toxin in combination, uh, kind of a collusion between them maybe, that I generalized and said all diseases are due to a combination of some parasite or it's something that's trying to live on you and a toxin, um, maybe a solvent, maybe a heavy metal that's facilitating that, uh, that invader. Well, the easiest example that comes to mind is diabetes. You have the pancreatic fluke invading the pancreas and a potent wood alcohol, methyl alcohol, wood alcohol, which pollutes nearly all the processed food that we have on the market in tiny amounts. But by the time you're drinking and eating it all day long with that little bit, it adds up. To, and that combination, I always see in diabetes, that might not be all there is to it. But if you correct those two things, you recover from your diabetes. 
I was really shocked when I found out that this is something that affects every single living human. In fact, every single living organism on the face of the earth could be leading a healthy lifestyle. You could be jogging, eating raw food, taking vitamins and all those kind of things. But these guys don't care. These guys are persistent. They're dangerous. They're deadly. They've been around for millions of years. They know what they're doing and they're inside of all of us. And we're constantly being exposed to this is something that we all need to take very seriously. This is not science fiction. This is scary. It's real and it's serious. Monsters living inside us, they eat our bodies and control our emotions, urges, and thoughts. As a colon hydrotherapist for approximately 20, 21 years now, you wouldn't believe what I see coming out of people's bodies. This is not just a third world country thing. Everybody has them. Even normal people with lots of money live in suburbia who take showers three times a day. If you eat sushi, you have parasites. One square inch of raw sushi meat can contain 10,000 parasite larvae and eggs that begin hatching inside you the minute you eat it. The most common kind is tapeworms, which can grow to 60 feet long and live in your intestines for decades. If you have pets, you are guaranteed to have parasites. You can't kill them all, only control them, because our bodies have trillions of cells which rely on helpful bacteria bacteria like probiotics to work right. If we kill all the organisms in our body, we kill ourselves. The secret is to keep the bad guys to a minimum. Make our bodies so healthy and clean, the undesirable guests won't want to stick around. Parasites are living alien creatures who live off of others. They eat your food, they poop their waste inside you making your blood, lymph and tissues toxic. They can multiply so much in your gut what you think is fat may in fact be entire nests of parasites. Subject to this, like it or not, it's a fact. Tests done at funeral homes show that 97% of the body fluids in people were totally consumed with parasites and worms. Scientists are just beginning to discover exactly how powerful and disturbing these hidden monsters can be. Our cells are controlled by chemical signals. Parasites emit a chemical that directly affects our behavior, thoughts, decisions, and urges. Are you willing to do what it takes to free yourself from something that's controlling you from inside? Who's in charge, you or them? If doctors couldn't handle anything, and here this little priest had come out of the woodwork and handled my lead poisoning like he did and some other health issues, and I went back to the doctors to tell them there was no interest. They weren't interested. That floored me. So I said to them, what else are you not telling us? And that meant I had to go back into history and find out where they'd made a mess of it. Mess of it. And as the further I got back in history through the 1800s, I began to realize that, look, did they know absolutely nothing? I mean, that's the opinion that everyone basically has. You know, back there in the 1800s, they knew nothing. So I started finding books, books that were published by doctors through the 1800s, books that they read and books that they learned from. And lo and behold, out of every single book were deworming programs parasite programs all through America, all through Canada, all through the world, parasite programs, and pictures of parasites that they had, that they had found in flesh, for doctors in those days did autopsies, and they found parasites. No one is resistant to worms and parasites, and look at the 1800s. We go through the 1800s, what did the doctors do then? They dewormed you. And the mess man I like in America is Dr. Chase out of Chicago. He wrote three books. You can get them in the library in the old book section, jo Dr. Chase. In the center of his book, he's got a whole bunch of remedies for deworming. And you know what? He kept records. I love it. And here's what he stated. For some strange reason, after 40 years of practice, I have asked everybody how often they deworm, and the people that deworm every year never come in for anything. They come in for checkups. They're healthy. And the people that never deworm, except for two or three years down the road, need some doctoring. And the people that never deworm, well, we're starting a new clinic for them because they have this strange new disease called cancer. And Dr. Chase got an 80% success rate right in Chicago in the 1800s of getting rid of cancer by deworming. So we started to search for parasite programs just to see what was going on, to see if maybe something was happening that we really didn't understand. So I did myself first. And lo and behold, I got eight and 10 inch critters out of me. They were white, 
first of all, they were in a toilet water and they were all bunched up that looked, I thought it was mucus. Until just for a curiosity, I threw some hot water in the toilet to warm it up and then went and gosh, they were, they strung out and they were swimming all over. 